Hey guys, we're at the Charlotte Chatcast. I'm Roger Holloway with Michael Curtis, aka Clark Kent Curtis, because he works in Mar. But doesn't he look like a little bit, you know, with the glasses and everything? So you're with Movement Bank, and my question to you, because we're talking from a real estate and a lender perspective, new construction versus standalone construction. What do you call standalone construction? Right. Yes. Yeah, so especially in the Charlotte area, Roger, we have so much new construction going in, right? That we have a housing so shortage. That's at least what we hear, right? And the news, you speak to local experts like Roger and his team, and you find out that, wow, yeah, we, we need to really have a game plan moving forward because of this shortage. Uh, and so new construction is, is definitely a hot topic I hear a lot about, okay? Uh, and being prepared for that process, again, Roger and his team are going to keep you uh, all the way through that. Right. But, but, but my yes. question is, what, what do you, what do you, how do you define standalone construction? Right. So to, to define the difference between standalone versus new construction, new construction, when you are buying that house and you write a contract, you're not uh, closing on that house or even having a mortgage until the end of that process, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the new construction uh, uh, developer, whoever that might be, they're going to have their own financing to complete the construction. Right. And then you're just qualifying for a regular on market or off market program. Check back, you know, a few episodes to hear about that. Um, but you you're not going to get a mortgage till the end. Right. So we, we call that yeah. in my world, we call that uh, carry costs. Mm -hmm. Either the builder has the line of credit and they're paying for the house construction phase by phase. So are you referring to standalone construction? By the way, notice, guys, I can't get an answer out of him. So oh, Michael, I'm getting there. I'm getting oh, there. Okay. Hang, hang with me. Hang with Go. me, Roger. Go. So we just defined new construction, now standalone, right? So standalone, I'm seeing a big rise in interest in as well. So standalone construction is when you find land, right? Uh, and you're going to build your own house on it. We're not involving yeah. a big developer of lot. any kind. Yeah. On your okay. lot, we call that, yeah. And yep. by the way, there's some other, there's another new builder that just entered that here in the greater Charlotte area. You know, True Homes locally has done yep. that uh, on your lot. And it's you're tied to a certain ge you know geographical area because they go all the way to the coast. But uh, and so Empire mm. uh, Communities, which had bought out the Shea Homes, uh, Shea Homes is back by the way under another scenario. But Empire Communities just dropped there on your lot. But here's a builder that we like real well that just is initiating right now in within an hour of Charlotte, and that's Eastwood Homes. And so that's what we call on your lot. And are you getting ready to talk about the construction to perm loan now? Yeah. So there's really two ways to approach it, right? So you found the lot. You've now identified a builder uh, that's going to build on this. They give you a breakdown of how much this is. And then you have a construction loan, right, from that period of time it takes to build the home. And so you can do it one of two ways, where that's construction to permanent, where it's essentially one close, where it, it converts at the end into a mortgage. Or you can do a standalone financing for construction where you're going to have the financing piece. And then at the end, you're going to refinance into a regular mortgage because, of course, the home's completed. What, what's the difference between those two, though? So it just depends on what's going to make the most sense from a value standpoint, right? So the, the, the one close is it, some people like that because they're not having to do it again at the end. Other people like the other option where they have two closes because they're going to finance the construction at the end, they can refinance out any equity. So for example, a lot of folks that I work with, with standalone construction, they will purchase the land with cash, which they can also roll in with construction if they want to, but in many cases they'll purchase with cash, then they'll build the home. So they'll finance the construction piece and at the end we'll, we'll refinance it and we'll give them back the land, the cash they paid for the land essentially. So now they just got a regular mortgage at the end. And so, so many do, people do you, do, you do, do you do lot loans? So, yep. So we have lot loans, land loans, construction loans. Of course, as we mentioned in the past episode, off market versus the on market as well. So on a, on a land loan, let's just say that we found a lot for 150 grand and, and typically how much would they need to bring 20% down typically? Usually I'd say 25%. So okay. there's a little bit more skin in the okay. game with land financing. Yeah. So uh, if, they, if they put 25 down on a, a 150 lot and they buy the mm -hmm. lot and then now they've got the lot tied down and then they're shopping for the right builder and the right plan right. and finalizing that, 
how do you come back in at that point for to finance the house? So it could be one of two ways. It could be where they have already got the builder. In some cases, they do. And so we won't even bother with a land loan. We'll just do construction where okay. they purchase land and we put the construction on top of it. Okay. In other cases, like you're saying, they may have financed the land. And what we'll do is essentially just wipe out the, the land financing once they're ready to start building. Okay. And other times, they've just paid cash for the land. And then that's almost like a refinance. There's very little out of pocket in that mm -hmm. instance because they put 80000 into this land or however much it is. And we're just simply going to put the construction financing on top. And the end, we can refinance it if we do the two-close option to bring just, out. Just, any just to be clear, you do lot loans, yes? Yeah. And you also do construction to perm loans? Yes, both Perfect. of those. All right. And is it true, and we're going to close and go to the next segment, that uh, on a CP, construction to perm, construction loan, that they're basically just paying interest only? Right. So it's based on the draw balance. It's, it's You're not there to pay off the construction loan. It's there to finance the build. So let's say the first draw is 50000 well, and a draw is basically just money that's used to help start the build process, right? Well, let's say for the foundation, the first draw yep. is fifty grand for the foundation. Let's say that. So we'll say fifty thousand. Well, you have an interest only payment on fifty thousand. Right. Well, then you have a second draw to put the drywall up. Well, that's another fifty thousand. Now we have an well, interest by, by, only. By the, by the way, Michael, we generally advocate. Yeah. Uh, after the foundation, we generally advocate putting up the walls first, and yeah. then the drywall. <laughs> this is why I'm in finance. <laughs> <laughs> you will not hire me to be your builder. You well, will hire why, me to be your lender. <laughs> and again, I've got people like Rodney Jones, who uh, yeah. is very good at this and has sold in the sanctuary the lots and yeah. million-dollar custom built. So uh, yeah. in, our, in our next one, we're going to talk about uh, – we're going kind of fast. I'm going to give you right. Michael Curtis's number from Movement Bank here at the end of the podcast, and you can call him specifically about this. Uh, <clears throat> but next time, we're going to talk about what to expect after closing, and I'm just going to leave that wide open, and we'll do that in the next episode.